what would be your advice being a part of this ecosystem, being in this space for so long? An expert, you know, offering of professional services and of course hardware there as well. Uh, I'm looking looking at you for some advice for these companies. What what should they do? Hi, this is your host Abhinav Bhartia, and welcome to Tia for Let's Talk. Today we have with us once again Rob Hirschfeld. CEO, co-founder of Rack and Rob, it's great to have you back on the show. It's a pleasure, Swap. It's, it's we've got some really exciting stuff going on in the industry, so I'm looking forward to getting to it. The reason behind this episode was the previous episode we recorded around VMware Broadcom. It got good, you know, traction, good viewership. A lot of questions on social media, a lot of concerns. So what I want to hear from you that first of all. The concerns are genuine. Of course, companies change their business model all the time, so there's nothing to do with them. But let's focus on the user base. Let's focus on the consumers. Uh, what's going on there? And this is something we've really seen is the fears that Broadcom um, of the Broadcom acquisition have been realized for people. Um, you know, we did a good job. You know, sort of talking neutrally around what Broadcom's doing and the potential for good outcomes and bad outcomes. Uh, we are definitely seeing a lot of companies that are finding the changes that Broadcom made are very concerning to them. We've we've heard concretely issues of uh, significant price increases for some customers. We've seen um, a lot of concerns for uh, customers having to absorb products or you know use products that they're that aren't core to what their their market is, and so. Um, you know, we are seeing a significant amount of resistance in market from companies that are hearing from Broadcom and then believing they need to take action to remove, you know, to, to lessen their dependency on broad on on VMware and VMware products. So that is very real. The 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 challenge on the other side of it is is that you know a lot of these companies um, don't have the type of inventory and the type of knowledge about how they have woven VMware into their into their enterprise, into their product suites um, to start making those types of decisions. So while there's a lot of anxiety and justifiable sort of, we want to make some changes, what we're also seeing on the other side of it is companies that are finding that the process of removing VMware is um, a much more significant undertaking than they expected it as they start to pull on that thread. And that that's probably the place where I think, you know, companies are really caught off guard in this whole process. Um, and it, this isn't that, that unique to VMware. You know, uh, a lot of enterprises have made decisions to be um, double down on one vendor. And then when they do that, they find it's very difficult to extricate themselves or create a multi-vendor environment. Can you also talk about, as I was reading a lot of things on social media, how are people kind of, not necessarily reacting, but uh, to find out, you know, what, what are people doing, you know, as they have the concern, whether it's the fee or the pricing, what are people doing looking as they look at the replacement of VMware offerings? There's what I would consider the healthy and the unhealthy uh, aspects of of the this sort of VMware the the VMware scare if I if you want if if I can take the alliteration on it um, there you know we see a lot of companies going down the route of looking at these changes coming with VMware and then immediately jumping into um, looking for an alternative to VMware and and that's healthy in that you want to you want to actually know what else is out there in the market and what you can do about it the thing that's unhealthy about just saying i'm going to rip vmware out and switch to something else is that a lot of companies don't actually understand what they need from vmware what they can replace what impacts it's going to have in their organizations and even worse if they do that um, as strictly a product replacement a lot of times the challenge that they had with vmware could be immediately replicated with whatever vendor they replace it with. And so just looking at a straight VMware replacement and saying jump straight into a you know another company, that other company could do have a similar outcome, right? It's possible that, you know, um, Nutanix, you know, is a good example. There were rumors that they were up for sale before the Broadcom pieces went down. And so 
Um, it's possible that you know you could be looking at the same situation playing itself out again right away. Um, and I think that that's one of the big challenges here is that when we look at um, a, a simple change one virtual manager for another virtual manager, it doesn't actually address all of the places that an organization is dependent. And even so, if you just did that swap, I think most companies, I know most companies, because we've been, we've been talking to them, um, are going to find that that swap out is actually much more entangled in their infrastructure and processes than they were expecting it to be. The more healthy, to, to answer the other half of that question, the more healthy evaluation processes are ones that actually start looking at it more on a use case by use case basis. And, and this is part of what we've been seeing as, as a best practice. What you really want to do is understand why your organization chose to use VMware and how they're using VMware on a use case by use case basis. And in, and in the places where the, the dependencies can be easily broken, then have an action plan for that. In the places where the dependencies can't easily be broken or the requ feature requirements for VMware are specific to what you can do with VMware, those are places where you're, you're going to look at how you're going to isolate and minimize that footprint rather than eliminate VMware. I, I, I think companies should be prepared that they're going to be paying uh, light VMware licenses for a long, long time. I, I think the question is, you know, how low you can turn that knob down, not um, whether you can just run through and sever your ties with, with VMware. You are part of the VMware ecosystem, you know, we cover VMware on a regular basis. When we ask questions like, you know, what are customers doing when they are looking for alternatives, so, you know, of VMware, <laughs> how do you see VMware will perceive such, such questions and discussions? I think that, you know, one of the challenges of being a good partner um, and we are VMware partners. We're partners with a lot of companies. And, and one of Racken's core go-to-market philosophies is that, that we help companies have supply chain independence and, and have multiple choices. And that type of choice is, is a core value for us. Uh, and I think one of the things that you're know, just, you know, almost talking directly to VMware here is, is I, I think VMware has, and we have a lot of customers who use VMware, who use it very productively. We help customers make dramatic impacts in security, performance, speed, and security of VMware. Um, and we want to keep doing that. We, we think that there's grounds for this. And, and I think at the end of the day, there's a lot of places where VMware is an excellent product uh, could always be a better product, and we would help happily help customers use that. I think that you know VMware has its own challenges, and they're starting to respond to market pressures where their messaging has clearly not been as specific as it needs to be, and their pricing um, needs to be on point for the value that they're giving. Um, but I, you know, at the end of the day, I think VMware has enjoyed a bit of a lock-in market where they've been dealing with virtualization work. And we've been talking to customers um, in very transparent ways, and customers talk to us in very transparent ways, knowing that um, they can't have a single vendor here, that they, they need to have and they want to have a variety of vendors at, at these layers doing this type of work. Um, and the lack of vendor diversity in, in the virtualization layer has caused challenges in market. Um, and this was going to come whether whether Broadcom acquired or not. I think it's added a lot of incentive for people to really clean this up and do the do the work uh, from that perspective. But so you know, our 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 interactions with VMware, um, while we make tremendous impacts in our customers in our customers' ability to consume VMware more easily, uh, we have not always felt that VMware was as excited as a partner as I would like them to be. Uh, and I, you know, one of my hopes, and I was on tape saying this several times, is that the Broncon acquisition would actually make a VMware more eager to find partners who were uh, adding to the ecosystem than uh, VMware was at times. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to talk to a VMware person and a customer who wants to use VMware and explain all the ways that we improve it, improve the product and make it a better fit. Um, you know, for us, that also means that we're improving the processes that go around VMware. 
um, which makes it actually easier to use other products. And, and that's, you know, companies should be competing on their merits, not on their market dominance. What would be your advice being a part of this ecosystem, being in this space for so long? An expert, you know, offering of professional services and of course hardware there as well. Uh, I'm looking looking at you for some advice for these companies. What what should they do? We see, and our our leading customers see this as a once in a an, in an IT generation opportunity to really address core um, what some people might think of as technical debt or process debt in their organization. There, you know, there aren't very many times in uh, an IT career when an external event triggers something that will cause you to reevaluate and ultimately improve your process opportunity. And so what, what our advice starts with for customers is to not just treat this as a single, I need to remove a vendor. Um, and in a lot of cases, VMware is a what I would call a keystone vendor for most of our customers, meaning that they they selected VMware and then built a rings and rings and rings of IT and automation and processes and other products, ecosystem components around that central piece. And fundamentally, the action of doing that has meant that there's a lot of hard-coded, hardwired, very fragile processes that have depended on VMware and for a lot of our customers depended on specific versions of VMware. And this is the opportunity to go in and do the work, actually build the platforms, build the platform engineering expertise, the processes to clean up that work so that when you wire things together, you're actually doing it with abstraction layers, but you're actually putting platforms and APIs in between the infrastructure layers so that you can actually turn your infrastructure into a much more service focused environment. Um, one that actually has infrastructure pipelines and end to end uh, processes that has places where you can substitute vendors. These are things that, um, you know, unfortunately we find companies don't want to make the investment to do because they've, they've sort of wired in on a single vendor like VMware even though they know that the ROI for making those changes is really, really high. And so what, what I would suggest when companies are doing this, that, that part of doing the inventory, and we've put together a, a, a four-step process that in, in actually helps companies identify exactly you know, that inventory process, but then score all these workloads and figure out which ones can be easily pulled off of VMware and moved into alternative hypervisors or eliminating hypervisors altogether and going to bare metal, right? If you can identify those use cases, you can then start the process of doing that work. But when you do the work, you want to do it in a way that adds in those abstraction layers so that you do not end up trapped again into that other hypervisor. Uh, and, and this is important. Companies that are doing the work shouldn't expect that they're going to go from using VMware as their exclusive hypervisor to using, you know, another hypervisor as their exclusive hypervisor. The expectation that companies should have coming out of this is that they're going to have um, better use hypervisors for their use cases, right? You don't, you don't need all the capabilities that VMware has for probably 80% of the use cases that people are using it for. Um, and for that reason, they should be able to pick a hypervisor or eliminate hypervisors altogether in places where they're not really pulling that much weight. If that's terrifying, and there's some places where the people you know have spent a lot of time learning VMware and becoming very invested in being VM experts, VMware experts, uh, you know, it's possible to run these systems without having you know the deep expertise and the complexity that VMware has brought into the systems, and that's that's what people need to understand. They need to understand that you don't have to recreate VMware and uh, you know vSAN and NSX and all these other layers for every application that you've had in place. Um, and and I think that would actually save a lot of money, help companies be more nimble, improve agility. Um, 
but it's a different way of looking at how you've, you've thought about infrastructure. And since you mentioned that, can you also talk about what are those scoring criteria that you talked about? We've come up with a list of 10 items that, that we think are important. And I, I don't want to try and go through every item here. We'll make those, those lists available for people. But it ends up having things like your skill, your team skills, how, how you've done that work, um, actually making sure that you are not, you know, you're fitting the features that need virtualization to the actual virtualization platform, thinking about your elasticity and whether or not you're, you're using virtualization that is very spin up, spin down, or if you're just counting on the fact that virtualization can have like vMotion and keep systems up forever. Those, those types of subtle factors in a workload actually make a huge difference in what choices you have and how much you invest in the virtualization under it. And then it's always important to go back and look at reliability, downtime, and security and make sure that you have those on there. So I'm sort of glossing over a couple of different general categories for how we would suggest customers score these different aspects. But being able to take an inventory and then, you know, and everything we do for scoring we don't like to have, you know, hours and hours or, or weeks spent doing scoring. Everything we do is designed to have what I would call a conference room um, scoring mechanism. So you can sit down, bring the right people in the room, and in an hour you know, or less, score an application to get you a ballpark correct. So you can identify the, the applications, the workloads that can be moved easily and should be take those efforts and ones that, you know, you're probably going to be on VMware for generations if they have a really specific type fit to VMware. Um, and that's fine. That's, I think, you know, people need to recognize that, that that is a, you know, staying on VMware for applications is the right outcome. As long as you know that that was the right thing to do and that you're, you're getting your ROI from that platform. Um, and ultimately that's, that's the opportunity. And the other thing I would say here is that, you know, you should walk into any of these events thinking through um, your platform readiness, your platform team readiness. Um, and that's an, you know, there's an opportunity in here of, of how you build up your, what your organization should look like. I don't have a scoring criteria for that one. I need to think about platform readiness as your, as the score. Rob, thank you so much. Once again, great insight there. And I look forward to chatting with you again. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.